Good evening students, my name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. Students, in this lecture of Biology, today I am going to tell you about a very important topic for all my 11 students, difference between living and non-living. As we all know that currently I am making my videos for my 11th student on the basis of your book that is NCERT Biology book for 11th class. and. In the last video, I told you about the characteristics of living. That was the lecture number one of chapter number one. So if you haven't watched that video, then please check it first. After that, you will understand this lecture well. So I'm going to start. So I'm telling you about the difference between living and non-living. So first of all, we will talk about the characters and then I'll tell you about the livings and non-living. So the first character is First of all, I'll tell you about the definition. So what is the definition of a living being? That is, living things are organisms that shows signs of life. Means, if any organism show the characteristics of life, such as reproduction, adaptation, definite shape and size, uh, homeostasis, metabolism, etc., etc., all these characters are the sign of life, the characteristics of life, which I have described in my last video. So, if any organism shows different characteristics of life, then you can say that it is living. So, the living things are organism that show sign of life. If any organism shows the sign of life, then you can say it is living. Now, what about the non-livings? Non-living things are objects. They are generally objects that do not show any sign of life. They do not show reproduction, they do not show adaptation and other living characters. So, if any organism do not show the life of, sorry, the sign of life, then you can say it is non-living. Okay. And it is not organism, it is only an object. Now, the next point is body organization or cellular organization. The body of living is made up of cells. As I have described in my last video, the body of livings have a cellular organization. Now I am telling you in detail. Suppose that it is a cell and we all know that cell is the structural and functional unit of all living beings. So in our body or any other living, cell is the basic unit. When the cell makes a group means different kinds of cells are attached with each other or similar types of cells are attached with each other then the group of cells is called as tissue when these tissues are grouped an organ is formed so the group of tissue is known as organ suppose that it is the liver an organ of your body and if organs are fused or combined then organ systems are formed and finally, all the organ systems such as digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, etc, etc. When all the organ systems fuse together, then the body of a living is formed. So, the basic unit of living is cell, the group of cell is tissue, the group of tissues is organ, the group of organs is organ system, while the group of organ system is known as body. So, the body organization of livings is cellular organization means cells are present in living beings consisting protoplasm and other cell organelles. Now what about non-living cells are not present. The body of non-living does not consist any type of cellular organization means cells are totally absent in non-living. It was point number two. Now I'll tell you about the point number three. Growth. What is growth? The increasement of mass and size is that is a permanent change is known as growth. Suppose that when you was you were about four years old, then the size of your hand may be like this, and now you are 16 to 17 years old, then the size of your hand is just like this. So it is 
the growth the permanent change in the size of an organism or any part of the organ of any body part that is called growth and it is permanent it is not reversible so the growth is only occurs in livings while it is do not present in non living so non livings show no growth growth is present only in the living beings now the next point is metabolism as i have told you before that metabolism what is metabolism so all the chemical reactions takes place in our body are collectively known as metabolism or you can say in the other words the sum of different chemical reactions takes place inside our body or inside the living's body is known as metabolism it is further divided into anabolism and catabolism so different kinds of chemical reaction generally takes place in the body of living that is called metabolic activities or the phenomena is known as metabolism so metabolism is only occurs in living while do not occurs in non living so again an important point that metabolism occurs only in living do not occurs in non living now the next is homeostasis it is a new word for you i think what is homeostasis homeostasis means to maintain the internal body temperature is known as homeostasis i repeat all the living being maintain their internal body temperature and the phenomena is known as homeostasis okay so homeostasis occurs only in living it do not occurs in non living so it is only found in living next point is definite shape and size now if we are talking about the shape of any living suppose that i am telling you about suppose imagine a lion imagine an elephant or imagine any other animal so you will imagine a definite shape or size of that particular animal but if you imagine any non living objects such as you are imagine uh, you are trying to imagine like a stone okay a brick a coal whatever any non living object then you cannot imagine in a perfect shape and size so the shape and size is not definite in non living while it is definite in living so definite shape and size is the correct characteristic feature of all the living beings so definite shape and size present in living while absent in non living the next point is adaptation what is adaptation as i have told you before adaptation is a capability of an organism to adjust themselves according to their environment so suppose that with an example i'm telling you suppose that this is a bird and this bird have wings for flying suppose that this bird do not have wings is it possible to fly no it's not possible without the wings a fish consists of gills for aquatic respiration suppose that it is a fish and consisting gills for respiration for aquatic respiration so the aquatic respiration takes place with the help of gills this fish can breathe only with the help of gills so it is the aquatic adaptation just like this bird can fly just because of wings so it is the aerial adaptation so any organism any organism is capable to maintain capable to adjust themselves in their environment on the basis of adaptation and for their survival adaptation is very important and this adaptation only present in the livings it is not present in non livings so adaptation present in livings while absent in non living now the last point is reproduction reproduction what is reproduction reproduction is a process through which an organism give birth to their young ones reproduction is a process through which an organism give birth to their young ones so reproduction present only in the living or occurs only in the livings it do not occurs in non living so it was all about the characters and differences between living and non living now in some, uh, summary i'll tell you definition living things do not sorry shows the sign of life while non living do not shows any sign of life 
organization cells are present cells are absent growth growth occurs in living do not occurs in non living metabolism occurs in living do not occur in non living homeostasis occurs in living do not occurs in non living definite shape and size present only in livings while absent in the non livings adaptation is found only in the livings you can say it is present only in the livings while the in non livings adaptation is absent now reproduction occurs in living while do not occurs in non living so it was all about the differences between living and non living i think all the things are very clear to you still if you have any confusion any question then you may ask in the comment section i will definitely reply you so in this video it's enough uh, i'll tell you about the next topic in the in our next lecture that is lecture number 3 and maybe i'll start binomial nomenclature uh, given by carolus linnaeus in my next lecture again an important topic for all my 11th students so in this video it was enough thanks for watching have a good day